This video is going to discuss how to set up your own colored histograms, trend candles which highlight the statistical strength or weakness right on your candles, and we also have this also in a color strip which is basically a little tiny thin line on the bottom of your chart that shows the statistical strength. To add this to your chart, you right click on your chart, go to add script, and this is for men or students only. Find FX build a trend candle color, color strip, or histogram. This one's a histogram. This only works live, which you'll realize why in a minute. Uh, and once you set up the weights and the time frames of the data to order and some of the indicators use a period uh, and you click add script, it starts and it updates in real time. And this is what it looks like, you know, as it had run uh, live. So build a trend histogram color strip and candle color. The candle color again colors the statistical strength or weakness right onto the candles with different shades of red and green. Darker green are strong, darker red are weak. The color strip is a very tiny stri uh, strip that goes along the bottom and it's multiple different shades of red and green too. And again the histogram is what you see here. The purpose of this is to try to improve our tools and to let people use our tools and customize them to fit their style. If you're a scalper you probably want to use a lot of very fast time frames and very fast periods so that you get faster and more up-to-date uh, trends. Uh, if you're an intermediate time frame trader you might want to use a little bit longer term. The first column in each of these fields is the weight. What percentage out of a hundred does this particular uh, indicator uh, get averaged together into the final one which you can see. This has to add up to 100. If you add up more than 100 or less than 100 you will have messed up results. I didn't put any code in there that babysits people that can't simply add you know to 100. This 10 means 10 percent. This one right here gets 0 percent. This one's 10 percent, 5 percent, 5 percent, 10, 10, 20, and 30. Most of these indicators measure the direction of the trend. Trend candles use the Heiken Ashi. It takes every single pound pair in this instance and compares it to every other one, the dollar uh, against the euro, the Swiss, CAD, Australian, New Zealand, and so forth. And we do the same thing for the dollar. What percentage of five minute bar trend candles are going up or down? This other one, which I'm not waiting in here, you can put a different time frame. And you can put anything you want in here. If you want to give 5% to the 30 minute bars trend candles, uh, so be it. The next one is also a directional tool. It measures what percentage of currencies are above or below certain moving averages. Uh, and in this instance, I have a 15 minute bars, 20 period moving average, which is about the last four hours worth of price. Uh, what percentage of pound pairs are above this four hour price, uh, average price, and what percentage are underneath? And all the dollar pairs do. Uh, I have the 60 minute, 20 period average, which is approximately the average for the last day. What percentage is above or below that. I give a smaller weighting because I wanted this to be faster. It's going to take a lot longer, sometimes an hour and a half to two hours, for a currency to go from the extreme low to go back above its hourly moving average because it's usually 30 to 120 pips away. Uh, the 3x3 three three power index, this is just simply the same thing as a regular power index. This is basically a three period moving average shifted three periods to the right. And in this instance I have 5% weight and I'm using 15 minute data. The three line break is a unique tool. It's a little slower than some of the other tools in measuring direction and it basically analyzes the swings. If uh, the pound dollar makes a higher high, a bigger swing high, that trend is going to be up. It's going to take it more uh, time to break the previous swing lows and therefore switch the uptrend to a downtrend. It's quite uh, slow in uh, switching trend direction so I would advise not using really uh, more than 30 minutes as at the max. The Fisher percent is a very fast indicator. It's oftentimes one to two bars early in switching trend direction and because of that I added it in here uh, to weight against all the other tools uh, because it can oftentimes show new trends uh, exactly as they're happening and sometimes like I said a bar or two earlier than the real part of the move happens. The ADX and the Momentum Pro are both trend intensity. It's one thing for all the pound pairs to be going down and the dollar pairs from, to be getting stronger, 
that's going to cause the pound dollar to go down but it's another thing for the market to be going down today twice the intensity that it normally does on average and that's what these two tools show ADX trend is made up of all the different ADX's averaged together and the momentum pro measures each bar to that bar in the in the past so if you looked at the nine o'clock uh, AM bar it's comparing that five minutes movement of all the currencies to that nine o'clock period over the last 20 days and so I like to give in my uh, tools that I trade with myself I like to give intensity tools at least at the minimum these two bottom tools at least 40 percent of the weight and directional tools no more than 60 percent of the weight because on a dead day otherwise you could see uh, an 80 90 100 percent reading on here and maybe the euro dollar is going up against uh, 100 percent of other pairs but it's not exploding up and when you have a very high percentage of one pair going up and another pair going down and they're doing so with tremendous intensity those trends tend to continue and so by giving these more weights you'll find uh, a higher accuracy in what you really want what you really want as a trader is not necessarily to know what it did in the past but to surmise what it's most and not and that doesn't mean it's always going to happen sometimes it does sometimes it doesn't what it's most likely to happen in the future and when these explosive trends are there typically there's some continuation in the future and you're likely to make more than what your risk is I advise using 6 to 12 pip stops and when trades work oftentimes they go you know 20 to 50 pips and so your wins are significantly bigger when the trades work than your losses let's just take a look at this one which I left running Re remember once you add it to your chart it starts live and then it starts updating live it doesn't display previous bars because there's no way to line up all those different time frames and all those different indicators and multiple time frames with whatever time frame you have up and in this instance I have a six pips per bar range chart which isn't even an, a normal or standard you know five minute or ten minute or fifteen minute bar this is a bar where every time it moves six pips there's a new bar which you know most of us uh, in our group find that this is a much cleaner uh, chart pattern so as you start today off there really wasn't much strength or weakness today before uh, you start to see some weakness right here and basically that's what you're looking to find uh, once the trend is down and has decent intensity at or above this 80 80 line you look for a pullback or a sideways range and you sell it in this instance it went down a little bit lower and came back up you have a small profit here and notice on the way up there's really not that much strength so you know one of our methods is when the market retraces if it has a little sideways rectangle pattern of at least a half an hour when it breaks it goes short uh, this one could be in an uptrend but once it goes down comes back up again and you can clearly see less strength than before this is a pretty high probability trade keep in mind it fell from 50 all the way down here to 17 so that's a 30 pip move wait for at least a 10 or 15 pip and I usually like 15 to 25 pip pullbacks it breaks the trend line you go short you know and you can see these are many there's many 10 to 15 pip moves out of this notice extreme weakness here on the way up there's almost no strength whatsoever and that's basically what you're looking for uh, there's only two entries that we teach and you have to watch our other videos to see that and come to our classes but basically we find strong trends and then we wait for a pullback which in this case you can see it went down this is a little bit of pullback we go short or the other trade is wait for a sideways rectangle pattern and I like at least a half an hour to two hours you know but this is kind of what it looks like if this this was a little bit longer uh, and was right near the lows when it breaks down through the low you go short now notice a little bit later in the day uh, first of all the intense weakness is gone you can clearly see and this is the most strength it's had pretty much for the entire day right here and anytime you get a pullback where this is still green uh, after seeing some signs of extreme strength usually that trend's going to continue in this case uh, it continued for another 30 pips and notice as it's going sideways right here this last peak up had less strength than before and this had less strength than here it's pretty clear that the uptrend is over let's look at another example um, this is the euro yen you know it wasn't a downtrend uh, we start to go up here with incredible incredible strength you get this pullback with almost absolutely a you know minuscule weakness 
and whether you went short once it went above this bar's high here um, but you can see it went from about 8 all the way up to about 42 it's a 30 pip move your risk is just simply underneath the swing low by 1 to 3 pips it's up to you I usually do 1 or 2 pips the more volatile the currency the more padding I'll give it just so noise you know doesn't get me out of uh, the market so when this double topped right here and pulled back and made a lower low here and had incredible weakness uh, on the way up it had less strength and weakness so these are the kind of things that you can use to trade off of uh, earlier today uh, when this was trending up you can see it made a higher high with incredible intensity during these pullbacks right here there's almost no weakness and anything at and above 80 level is, is really a big sign of uh, strength or weakness notice this earlier today a drop off with absolutely incredible almost 100 percent weakness uh, which is usually going to continue so you might have on this way up here and sold this and guess what unfortunately the weakness didn't return there so guess what you had a small loss eight or ten pips it comes back up and doesn't break through the high doesn't have incredible strength right here uh, aggressive traders really probably would have sold it again right here and got into the trade early or once it kind of came down and you saw incredible weakness here you would just simply sell this little sideways rectangle pattern and you can see it fell from about 105.10 all the way down to 104.40 so it's about a 70 pip move down and you have many opportunities to get in there because there's clearly extreme weakness all the way so like I said to begin with and every trader should know nothing works 100% of the time and nor does this but it does help you spot the trends that are most likely to continue and more importantly than that uh, even if you're wrong half the time on some bad choppy sideways days when you do catch a trade usually it's going to be for a lot more pips than you're risking if you're catching an occasional 30 to 100 pip move and losing 5 to 10 pips when you're wrong uh, it doesn't take a, a math genius to know that you don't even have to be 50 percent right in order to net pips and that's what this tool's uh, designed for you can customize it to fit your style of trading use longer time frame uh, data if you want something that's slower and switching from an uptrend to a downtrend and use faster data and faster periods uh, for you know scalping and faster in and out in and out trading that you know I pretty much do and that I teach in class